Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And when we lose the game, it's usually more of the negative takeaways in these five things that we learned about uh, videos. But today, there's a mixed bag. There's some positive and there's some negative. There's still some positive things they can take away from this loss. And I'm a positive guy. So we got some, and that's what we're going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Tree from BigJReport.com, and these are five things we learned between the Jacksonville Jaguars and Kansas City Chiefs, week number five, matchup. Number five, injuries are hurting the offense. You know, last year, one thing that made the Jaguars so good is that we didn't have a whole lot of injuries on either side of the ball on offense or defense. We managed to stay healthy, but this year, it's quite the opposite. The year that we were supposed to make the push, go to the Super Bowl, and a lot of injuries are happening. You know, a lot of people, including myself, said that we could really not rely on last season as far as health goes. You know, there are going to be injuries that happens to every NFL team, but this year, it's not only happened to key players, but it's also happened to, you know, guys that we rely on in rotation and guys that we rely on, you know, to come in when other guys are tired and really make big plays. You know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about my boy, Corey Grant. Corey Grant, he's out for the season with a left leg injury, and that's a big hit to this offense, especially after Leonard Fournette's hamstring injury, which has been lingering all season long going all the way back to last year. I don't know, last year wasn't a hamstring, but, you know, he was injured last year. So Leonard, you know, he's always off and on with this injury. And now we only have TJ Yeldon and somebody else. We'll get into that in a little bit. But, you know, another a couple more key injuries. Cam Robinson, the left tackle, this offensive line unit, is supposed to be a top five uh, in the league. We lost him for the entire year. And uh, come to find out, we lose Austin Safarian Jenkins to the IR, but he is eligible to come back after, I believe, week eight or nine. Is it, it's an eight. No, it's an eight-week IR, I think, is what it is. But he's eligible to come back. And our tight ends after? Uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins are not very good. So not really reliable guys. So the injury bug has bitten the Jacksonville Jaguars really, really hard. And it was really evident in this Chiefs game. Number four, Blake got hit a lot. Now I'm not here to go on uh, here on Troop Talks, five things we learned from video. And say that... Uh, Blake Bortles' four interceptions were not all his fault because a lot of them, let's just say all of them, were really down to bad decision making and really should not have made those types of throws. But to be honest, he was hurried, he was panicked, you know, he had to make a couple of throws. The throw that, the interception he threw in the red zone, which he is, you know, really efficient at not doing. Josh Wells just got beat off the line so quick and he had maybe 1.5 seconds to throw that ball. It looked like Niles Paul was trying to get open into the uh, end zone, but, you know, Bortles, he got scared, he panicked, he threw it right on H.A. Can's helmet, and, you know, the rest is history. I ended up getting intercepted, you know, Blake Bortles, the living meme, is what I like to call him. But, um, yeah, so we really cannot have Blake Bortles just get hit and hit and hit because, you know, that's like 2016 Blake. When 2016 Blake was pressured, he crumbled, and last year we were fortunate enough to have that solid offensive line. And this year, they were supposed to get better at the addition of Andrew Norwell. And though they've been all... Andrew Norwell has done his job. He's done pretty all right. He's definitely struggled here and there. But, you know, without having Cam Robinson, a true blindside protector, Blake Bortles is really, really struggling. And I hope the Jags manage to trade for a decent or a good left tackle before the trade deadline's over because Josh Walker is not going to get it done. Number three, we went away from the run game too early. You know, hindsight's kind of 2020 with this whole going away from the run game uh, kind of early situation. Now that we kind of look back at it, maybe you could say that uh, after Corey Grant got injured, the offense really didn't want TJ Yeldon to get injured. But the fact of the matter is they were still throwing him the ball, and he was still getting the ball. So if that was the case, then that's a really weak weak case because they were still throwing TJ Yeldon the ball. They just weren't handing him the ball. Uh, TJ had 10 rushes for 56 yards with a 5.6 yard average, which is a good average for a running back. A 5 yard average is a really good average for a running back. And to be honest, you know, when we went for it, uh, when it was 10 to 0 and uh, tried to get the touchdown instead of the three points, I think that was the 
steady decline of the run game, you know. Uh, Doug Marone, Nathaniel Hackett, obviously were playing from behind and they were trying to, you know, have Blake Bortles pass the ball. But with that being said, you know, you can't completely just go away from the game plan, you know, what the Jags usually run, which is a lot of running game and, you know, inside zones, you know, runs just right up the fucking shithole, you know, <laughs> just a bunch of running plays. You know, we needed to get some more running plays in there because Blake Bortles is not a quarterback that is built to throw the ball 61 times as we addressed uh, in the recap. So TJ Yeldon was a guy we went away from way too early. And let me just tell you too, a uh, little side note here. TJ Yeldon, I think is pretty reliable. Like I said, he's won the offensive player of the week three times this season, at least from me. And you know, he's been that guy. He's been that dude, you know, he's been reliable. And I could tell you that I was completely wrong about TJ Yeldon heading into the season. And you know, TJ Yeldon, man, from now on, from here on out, he is that guy, and I think he has what it takes to be that guy. Number two, we just signed a reliable guy. Now, during my recap video, I was very, very obvious that I really did not want the Jags to trade for a running back. I don't see the point in it. I understand Leonard is injury prone uh, as all hell as he is, but we're going to end up getting him back late in the season, you know, when we desperately, desperately need the run game to improve. Um, so I didn't think trading for Le'Veon Bell made a lot of sense, especially because he wants the bag, and we have too many, way too many key defensive players to sign uh, once their contracts are up, you know, their rookie deals. So that was just out of the question. I didn't think there was any other really running back worth trading for that would make such an instant impact, and we didn't really need that. We didn't need a guy to make an instant impact. We need a guy to be TJ Yeldon's understudy. That's what I've been trying to say. TJ Yeldon is that dude. I think he can handle it. He can handle the pressure of being our number one running back, at least for now. And the guy that we went out to get was the perfect type of running back uh, that we should have got. Jamal Charles is now a Jacksonville Jaguar. That's insane. You know, Jamal Charles is one of the most electrifying backs uh, in his prime back in the day when he was playing with Kansas City. Uh, he, I think he ended up retiring, actually. I don't, I'm not too sure, but the Jags worked him out, offered him a contract, and they signed him. This is the perfect, perfect... Uh, running back for the Jags to get obviously he has injury issues I'll get to that but you know to be a guy that you know he's a veteran he could talk to TJ Yeldon you know really try to show him the ropes and even if even if uh we keep Jamal throughout the playoffs this is gonna rub off well on Leonard Fournette as well just a veteran in the running back room which is a uh, you know kind of what we we lack a lot of uh, on the team is veteran presence so I think Jamal Charles is gonna bring that to this Jaguars offense and to the running backs. And I think that once his name is called, you know, if we need him on like a third down or, you know, TJ Yellen needs a rest, he's that guy. It's a perfect signing, really, for everybody involved. We didn't have to spend too much money. He's obviously proven. He's a little bit on the older side, but I definitely think this was a good pickup by the Jags. And number one, it's week five. Let's step back and breathe a little bit. Now, when you win games, it's easy to say, Oh, we're fucking killing the game right now. You know, that's just easy to say. And when you lose, it's easy to say, oh, our season's going to shit. But what a lot of teams don't understand, and I think what a lot of Jags fans really don't understand, is that it's week five. You know, we need to step back. We need to breathe. We're three and two heading into week five. I mean, heading into week six, excuse me. We're three and two. It's above 500. That's still a good record. We're still tied for on top of the AFC South. We still have a lot of wiggle room to improve and to get better and to improve that overall record. <clears throat> you know, things right now are looking like they're on the decline because we had bad Blake last week. But, you know, once we get good Blake two, three weeks in a row, which it's going to happen, I promise. It's going to happen. And once that happens, the Jags are going to be the real deal. And we're going to go back to talking about Super Bowls. I think right now it's a little bit hard to talk about the Super Bowl. I think that uh, with what is going down and how, you know, the injuries are happening, a lot of Jags fans are really kind of pushing that away. But I still believe, I still believe this could be a Super Bowl run for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I think that it's early in the season. The Jags will really find their footing, you know, around week 10. You know, week after the week nine bye, I think the Jags are really going to find their footing, and I think we're going to put the metal, pedal to the metal and be able to actually make that Super Bowl push. So everybody, take a deep breath. It's only week five. And that was five things we learned from the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Kansas City Chiefs week number five matchup. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook. At Trade Talks, follow me on Twitter. At Trump and Pixley, and follow me on Instagram. 
at Trayvon Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Become a part of Trebs Tribe today. Click that bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.